the Gemara starts appraising the day of rain in nine different ways. According to Rabbi Vahu, the day of rain is greater than that of Tchiyas HaMesim. Because Tchiyas HaMesim is confined to Tzadikim, those who merit it, the day of rain is good for everybody. Rabbi Yosef disagrees with Rabbi Vahu. He argues that Chazal inserted Masha Ruach in the bracha of Tchiyas HaMesim because it is on a par with Tchiyas HaMesim, but not greater. Rav Yehuda compares the day of rain to the day on which the Torah was given to Am Yisrael. Rava disagrees with him because the Torah writes in Vizos HaBracha, Yarov Kamata Lechi, my lekach will fall like rain. So now we derive from the Pasuk in Mishle, Ki Lekach Tov, Nasati Lechem, that Lekach pertains to Torah. And a comparison of this usually denotes comparing the less significant, my Torah, to the more significant, like rain. Rava therefore concludes that the day of rain is greater than the day on which Torah was given to Am Yisrael. To reconcile the two seemingly contradictory phrases, Yarav Kamot Lichi and Tizal Ketali Mrosi, Rava explained that if he is worthy respectable Talmud Chacham who will study Torah Lishma, then be gentle with him like do. But if not, then turn your back on him. And the Marsha explains that they're held to a higher standard. Rabbanan learns from the Pasuk Eitz Chayim Hila Machzik in Ba, in mission, that regards the people who study Torah Lishma for the sake of fulfilling what is written in it. Torah becomes a bomb of life. Yarov Kamata Lukhi, that if they study it for ulterior motives, it becomes a source of death. Because Arifa means to kill, like in Pasuk the Arfu Sham Esha Egla Benachal. They're talking about the Egla Arufa. Rav Zera declined to learn Torah, Rabbi Yirmiyu, because he was feeling weak. He did, however, condescend to say a piece of Agada. He explained the strange Pesach in Kiseite, Ki Adam Eitz HaSode, with the seemingly contradictory Pesukim, Ki Mimenu Sochel, Ba'oso Lo Sechros, and Oso Sachris V'charafa. That if he is a worthy Talmud Chacham who learns Saru Lishma, according to the Marsha, then eat from him, learn from him. Otherwise, destroy him and cut him down. Rav Chana Bar Chanino learns from the Pesach in Mishle. And here's where we're up to. Ba'arze, 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 nagau. That even... Let me find it. Okay, that's not the one. But the one we're up to. Okay, just one piece of metal. Barzel, Barzel, Nago. Just like one piece of metal sharpens the other, so too does one Talmud Chacham sharpen the other in Halacha. Rabbi Barav Chana learns the same thing from Yirmiyahu. I know of his comparison of Torah to fire. Because one fire on its own cannot on on a firebrand cannot create a fire. It is only when there are many firebrands burning together that each one helps the next to burn brightly, and between them that fire is created. Rav Yosi Bar Rav Chanina learns from a pasuk in Yirmiyahu, Cherev El Habadim, that someone who learns on his own in the days when they had no sefarim deserves to be put to the sword. The Noalu, that he becomes foolish because on his own, he stands to misconstrue what he learns. He learns like the, from the Gezer of Shava, the Noahu, and Asha Noalu, the Asha Chatanu, in Pasha's Balozcha, that next he will put his mistakes into practice, causing him to see. Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, learns from the Pasuk in Mishle, comparing the words of Torah to word, to wood. Eitz Chayim He, 
that in the same way as small sticks of wood inside kindle the larger ones, so too do the smaller Talmidei Chachamim sharpen those who are more learned in halacha. In a similar vein, Rav Hanina said that he learned much from his Rebbeim, even more from his colleagues, and most of all from his Talmidim. So one should, he's told to bring water to the thirsty, which is coming for the Rav to go out and learn with the Talmidim, if he is worthy, if he wants to learn more from the Rav, if he is not, then the Talmud who must go to the water, then the Talmud must go to him. Then teach the secrets of Torah to a Talmud who is worthy. If he is not, then one should best keep it to himself. According to Rav Hanina Baridi, the Navi Yishayahu compares words of Torah to water. In the Pasuk, Hai Kolt Semel Lechum Lamayim. Because Torah only lasts by a person who is humble, just like water will always leave a high spot to go to a low spot. In another pasuk, Kishayel compares Torah to wine and milk as well, because just as these three liquids would only last in cheap earthenware vessels, but not in gold ones, so too will Torah only last inside a person who is humble. Rav Yoshua was not a good-looking man. When the emperor's daughter expressed surprise that so much wisdom should exist in such an ugly receptacle, he responded by suggesting that she move all her father's wine from the earthenware vessels where they were being stored to gold and silver ones, as befit, befit such a precious commodity. When the wine turned sour, the emperor demanded an explanation as to why he had instructed his daughter to move the wine to gold and silver, Rabbi Yeshua replied that it was his daughter herself who had expressed the theory that the more precious a commodity, the more expensive the container ought to be. Rabbi Yeshua then explained that it is not because a person is good-looking that he cannot learn, but that if he would be ugly, he would learn still better, because good looks breeds vanity. So now we're on Ahmed Bey's. Okay, the second reason for the Navi's comparison of words of Torah to water, wine and milk, is that in the same way that one only needs to turn away for a moment, and these liquids will become spoiled by means of a foreign element falling into them, so too one only needs to turn away from Torah for a brief moment, and once Torah will become spoiled, contaminated by foreign elements. He compares them to those three liquids rather than oil or honey, because oil or honey, due to their density, do not spoil so easily when a foreign element falls into them. It remains on top from where it can be easily removed. Rav Chama Barav Chanina learns from the Pasuk in Nishayohu, where in the same Pasuk with the Navi refers to the creation of heaven and earth, his Wurupta. He writes, Ani Hashem Barasid, in the singular, that Hashem is happy with the creation of the rain, to which Bereshiv refers just like he was with the creation of heaven and earth. And it is salvation that sprouts and flourishes on the day of rain. Ra we're up to here, we're up to here. Spoil only through an intention, only through an intention. Where is in discussion? Hanina says the day is rain as much as creation and right, heaven and earth, because it says the skies will shower from above and the heavens will rain down righteousness. Tiftach eres, the earth will open up for Yifaru Yesho Staka, and salvation and charity will proliferate. The earth will cause salvation and charity to spring up together. Ani Hashem Barosiv. I Hashem have created it. Barosim Loinamar doesn't say at the end of the verse, I have created them, the heavens. Ella Barosiv. It says, I have created it, singular, meaning rain. God uses rain as an indication of his greatness. 
I'm a Rav Oshi. Uh, are we all together? 7B. 7B1. Are you with me? Oh, wait, I have my earphone on. Anybody hear me? Oops. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Oh, so from the word barasiv, the fact that the Pasuk uses the singular means it cannot refer to Shemayim Ba'aretz. So the Gemara says it refers to rain. And that's what brings Hashem uses rain as an indication of his greatness. Now Ravoshia says, I'm a Ravoshia. A day of rain is great. Even when salvation proliferates and grows, as it says in the Pasuk, the earth will open up and salvation will proliferate. Now, the Gemara starts of different teachings that demonstrates how the provision of rain is associated with the spiritual status of the people. said, Rain does not fall down. Ella, in Cain, shall Yisrael. Unless the sins of Israel have been forgiven. Shanamar, as it says, the Sisa Hashem Arsecha, Hashem, you have favored your land with rain. Shevach Sheves Yaakov, you have returned the captivity of Jacob. Nasosa Avon Amcha, you have forgiven the iniquity of your nation. Kasis Kol Chatasam Sela, you have covered up their entire sin, Sela. An alternative source for this teaching, Zeiri did have it with Dimat Ravina. Said to Ravina, he said to Ravina, "Asan tahava masnele, you derive this teaching from that verse. Anai mehalcha masnilem lach, but we derive it from the following verse. Baata tishma shemayim v'salach de lachatos, and you, you hear from he- from heaven." and forgive the sins of your servants, and give rain on your land. So this verse differs from the previous one. The first verse implies that rainfall precedes forgiveness, whereas this verse indicates that rain does not descend until the sins have been forgiven. More on this theme. Amar of Tanchum Berei Derav Chaya Ish Barako. What? Sorry, Drachia. I have a big problem with my, what should I call it? My left eye is not, whatever. Raftan Chundesan Rachia, a resident of Kvarako, said, Rain is not withheld. Elaim Kainis Chaibu Saneim Shal Yisrael. So name shall Yisrael is a euphemism. Anytime we refer to ourselves, we say Sanaim, especially if we say something negative. So we don't want to say that there's a negative on Yisrael, so we say Sanaim shall Yisrael. But it really means unless our Averos are condemned to destruction. Shinamar, as it says, see a gam chom yigzalu. The dry and the warm season steal the waters of the snowy season. Shal Chato, they have sinned in the depth. When the dry season is prolonged and the customary winter rains do not fall, it is evident that the people have been condemned to destruction in the depths of Gehenna for their sins. And now, Art Scroll, we turn the page to 7b2, and it goes an alternative source for this teaching. Ziri of the Havad said to Ravina, You derive this teaching from that verse. We derive it from another verse. He will restrain the heavens, so there'll be no rain, and you will swiftly perish. 
And there we find out the punishment for people if they turn away from Hashem and worship idols. The Gemara lists several sins for which rain is withheld. We say for Chatosim Shal Yisrael, so now the Gemara gets into which sins? Rav Amar Rav Chizda, Rav Chizda said, Ena Gashomim Nero Torim Ela Bishvil Bitul Trumas Omaisras. Rain is only withheld because of the sin of neglecting to separate Truma and Maisa. Shinemar, as it says, Tsiya Gam Chom Yitzulu. Like the dry and the warm season steal the waters of the snowy season. My mashma, how is this teaching indicated in the verse? Tana de Rabbi Leo Yishmael, a brice was taught in the yeshiva of Rabbi Yishmael, which interprets the verse as follows. Because of the things that I, Hashem, commanded you, that are performed in the summer, meaning trumas and maestris, when you're uh, shearing, when you're taking your done plants, the loa sisim, which you did not carry yet, yigazlu mikemi meishelag bimos hagashaman. The waters of snow, rain, will be stolen from you in the winter season. Amr Rav Shimon ben Pazi, Rav Shimon ben Pazi says, "Ein agashomim net zarim el b'shvil misifrei lashon hara." Rain is withheld only because of those who speak lashon hara. Shenemar, as it says, "Ruach tzafon techol al geshem ufanim nizamim lashon saser." The north wind prevents the rain, and Hashem shows an angry face when there is secretive talk. Amar Rav Sala, Amar Rav Hamnuna. Rav Sala said in the name of Rav Hamnuna, Ein agashavim net zarim el b'shvil as upon it. Rain is withheld only because of the brazen. Shenama, because it says, Vayimana rovavim umal kosh lo choyot. As it is said, the showers have been withheld, the rain, and there have been no late rain. Umotza isha zona chayot. Look, because you had the forehead of a harlot. You refused to be ashamed. So in that way, we learn that Azus, when Yeremiah is re- rebuking the people for being brazen, in even when punished by a drought. The Gemara now continues with another teacher of Rav Sala in the name of Ram on the subject of brazenness. Since we mentioned one, turning to B3. Sorry, 7B2. Yomar of Salom Rav Hamnuna, Rav Sal said the name of Rav Hamnuna, call of them Shiesh Boyazah Panin, everybody who has the attribute of brazenness. Sof nechshel ba'averu will ultimately stumble in sin. Shenemar, as it says in the pasuk, as we should have said before, mitzach isha zona hayalach. You had the forehead of a harlot because you refused to be ashamed. In the same way that a harlot goes out in public and does her thing and doesn't obviously concern herself with being ashamed. So you refuse to be ashamed even when you did your Averis. Rav Nachman Omar, Rav Nachman said, It is evident that he has already stumbled in sin. Shenemar, because it says, For it says, you had in the past. Doesn't say you will have in the future. It says you had in the past. More about Azaz Panim. Omar, Rabbi Barafuna. Rabbi Barafuna said, Kola the Mashiach lo Azus Panim, anyone who has the attribute of brazenness, Mutta le Kreise Russia, may be called a wicked person. Shenemar, as it says in the Pasuk, how is Ish Russia Bafanov, a man who is brazen, call him wicked to his face? Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak Omar, Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak said, Mutta le Sanoso, permitted to hate him. 
Shenemar, because the Pasuk says, the Yispan of Yiskev, the boldness of his face will be transformed. Al Tikri, don't read it as if it's read Yeshuna, will be transformed. Ella, rather read it as if it was written, Yisna, may be hated. Thus the verse teaches, one may hate a brazen person. Well, it's footnote 26. Since the O's and the boldness is written in the verse without a verb between the ayin and the zayin, it may be read together with the following word as oz panov, which is similar to oz panin, a brazen person. And that's Rashi's way of reading the poster. The Gemara keeps talking about sins which cause drought. Amma Rav Katina, Rav Katina said, Rain is withheld only because of the sin of neglecting Torah study. Shenemar, as it is said, Through laziness, the roof collapses. And that is the Pesach in... Kohelis. No, in, in Wukalis. If a person is too lazy to repair the small cracks in the roof of his house, the entire roof will eventually fall in. So, the roof collapse interpreted homiletically, this verse teaches, Bishvil Atzlus, Shahayubi Israel, because of the laziness of the Jews when they do not occupy themselves in the study of Torah, the enemy of the Holy One, same thing. When we refer to negative, we don't, we don't say anything negative You know, happens to Hashem. So we say, sign it. We say the enemy of the Holy One. Blessed, he becomes impoverished. In that, it's as if he is powerless to provide rain. The basis for this interpretation of the verse, the Ein Mach Ela'ani. The word Mach, translated in the verse as collapsed, is interpreted here as nothing other than poor. Shanemar, as it is said elsewhere, that Mach means poor. And if he is too poor for the assessment, and the word makara, using the verse to mean roof, is interpreted here as nothing other than the Holy One, blessed be He, Hashem, Allah Kodesh Baruch Hu. Shinemar, as it is said, Hamikra Bamayim Ali Yosef, who roofs makara his upper chambers with water. An alternate source for this teaching, Rav Yosef said, that this teaching may be derived from the following verse, and when they do not see light, the skies are patchy, but a wind blows and clears them. The derivation is explained. The ein or el Light is interpreted here as nothing other than Torah. Shenemar, as it is said elsewhere, ki ner mitzvah, the Torah are. For mitzvah is a candle, and Torah is light. Thus, the first part of the verse is interpreted, and when they do not see Torah, they don't study Torah. Bahiru, bishkakim. And the latter part of the verse, the skies are patchy, but a wind blows and clears them is explained as follows. Dona de Veda Ravi Shmuel. A Baraisa was taught in the Yeshiva Ravi Shmuel. Afilu Bishar Shira Kiyanasa Bahorim Bahorim. Even when the sky is composed of patches of cloud. Lahorid al tal umata that are about to bring down dew and rain. Ruach of the Vataharim. A wind blows and clears the sky from these clouds. Thus, the entire verse teaches, when people neglect the study of Torah, 
the sky is cleared of rain clouds. Now we learn another Averis which causes drought. Omar Ravami, Ravami says, Rain is withheld only because of the sin of theft. Shinemar, as it is said, Al Kapayim Kisa Ur, with clouds he conceals rain. This is interpreted homiletically, but of in Kapayim Kisa Ur, because of the sin of Kapayim, Hashem conceals Ur. These terms signify the following. The ain kapayim elochamas. The word kapayim is interpreted here as nothing other than theft. Shenemar is it is said elsewhere that kapayim is associated with theft. Uminachamas asher bechapayim, and from the theft which is in their hands, kapayim. Say what? I have a question. Yes, you, you translated or. As meaning rain. No, it's Torah. I mean, I'm sorry? Yeah, it, a couple of lines uh, before uh, you uh, said Shinemar. The Pasuk says, Bavon Kapayim Kisa Ur. Because of the sin of Kapayim, God conceals Ur. These terms signify the following The Ain Kapayim El The word Kapayim is interpreted as nothing other than theft. Shinemar, as it says elsewhere, the kapayim is associated with theft. And from the theft which is in their hands, and the word or is interpreted here as nothing other than rain. Shinemar, as it says in the Pasa, going to Daf Ches, Amid Aleph, Shalamudo. No, we're still, we're still in Zion and with Bet. I'm sorry? I'm still in Zion. I'm with Beth. Hold on. Did I turn two pages? Yeah. All right. My fingers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And the word Makara using the verse to mean roof is interpreted here as nothing other than HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Shinemar, as it says, HaMekare Bamayim Eliyosef, whose roof, who roofs his upper chamber with water. Another source for this teaching. You already did this. Wait. Ah, I'm sorry. Shinem, I keep forgetting the second column. Shinemar, as it says elsewhere, that or means rain. Yafit's anun oro, he scatters his rain or cloud. Thus, our verse is interpreted because of the sin of theft. God conceals, withholds the rain. The Gemara interprets the conclusion of the verse. My takante, what is his remedy? What takana? What can he do if rain is withheld? Yarbebet fila. He should pray profusely. Shenemar, as it says in the conclusion of the Pasuk, Vayitzavaleha But Hashem commands the rain to fall because of a petitioner. The ain pegia elat fila. And the word pegia, whose term mafgia is used in this Pasuk to mean a petitioner, means nothing other than prayer. Shenemar, as it is said, Ba'ata al tispalel barahamazeh, the al tifkabi, and you do not pray on behalf of this nation and do not entreat me. Thus the verse teaches that God commands the rain to fall in response to prayer. Another related teaching from Ravami. From Ravami, and Ravami said, "My dechsev, what is the meaning of that which is written? Im kocha habarzel, v'huloponim kilkol. If the iron is dull and one does not wet its edge, imri isa rokiyasha kicha kabarzel. 
interpreted homiletically. This teaches, if you see that the sky is as dull as iron, and the shall umata from its failure to precipitate dew and rain, bishfil masa hadar, it's because of the deeds of that generation. Shehem mekalkalim, which are degenerate, shenemar, as it says in the Pasuk. For who will upon him kill Kul? And if the generation did not beseech the face of God, it is degenerate. My hatiknosam, what is their remedy? It's kabru b'rachamim. They should persist in prayer. Shenemar, as it is said, continuation of the verse, the chayolim yigaber, legions will persist. However, as the verse concludes, the Yisron hachshir chachm, but the advantage of wisdom is greater. Kol shevein im chushan maseim meikaro. All the more so would rain have fallen if the did, deeds had been perfected from before. So what he's saying again is that rain is withheld because of our Averos. And what is your way out? Very strong davening. Another teaching based on the same verse. Veshlokesh Amar, Imra'i Talmud, if you see a student. Now we turn the page. Yep. Shalom du kashal of Kabarzel, whose studies are so hard to him, as iron, Bishvil Mishnaso, She'enis Adura love, is because his knowledge of the Mishnaic text is not arranged in an organized fashion. So here they talk about where you learn the basic laws, which is the Mishnah, and then one contrasts and analyzes them with the Gemara. If a student's knowledge of the Mishnahic test is not arranged in an organized fashion, he will be unable to remember it. Consequently, when he comes across difficulties in his studies, he will be unable to resolve them. Alternatively, here we refer to a student who has committed to memory an inaccurate version of the Mishnahic text. And as a result, he encounters an undue number of inconsistencies and contradictions. This, to me, is just incredible. How they did this without Svarim. How they did this. Rebbe organized all of this. He had to remember in one place, Ravami said something, so he put it down somewhere else also. Just incredible. Okay, my tikkun also yerba be yeshiva. He should spend more time studying in a yeshiva. But the other students review the Mishnaic text. The idea is that if he goes to the yeshiva, he will then meet other people who will be willing to sit and learn with him, and that will help sharpen him. Shenem Aras is said in the continuation of the verse, the chayelim yigaber, he should be fortified by the legions of students. However, as the verse concludes, the Yisran Hakshir Chachma, but the advantage of wisdom is greater, meaning, all the more would his studies have progressed if his knowledge of the Mishnah had been arranged properly in the first place. Ki Hadarish Lakush, as exemplified by the case of Resh Lakish. Chav Misader. Who would review the Mishnah forty times? Keneged Mem Yom Shenitna Torah, corresponding to the forty days during which the Torah was transmitted to Moshe. Va'ayilukamed the Rav Yochanan, and only then appear before Rav Yochanan to study Gemara. So he would first review the Mishnah forty times, and then sit down to learn the Gemara. Ravad the Bar. Ahava, Niste Masnison, Estrin Viar Boaz, Manim. Ravada Barahava would review his Mishnaic text 24 times. Kineged Torah Nevi'im Ksuvim, corresponding to the 24 books of the Torah, Nevi'im, and Ksuvim. 19 is the Nevi'im and Ksuvim which together with the five books of Moshe comprise the 24 books of our Torah.
Rava before sitting before Rava to start learning Gemara. So now we come into parallel interpretations. Rava Amar, Rava said, Imra Isi Talmud, if you see a student, Shalimudu Kasha Allah Kabarzel, whose studies are as hard to him as iron, Bishvil Rabo Sha'inu Maspal Ipanim, is because his teacher did not show him a cheerful countenance. Shenemar, as it is said, Fuhulo Panim Kilko, and he does not understand his studies. Because his teacher distorted his face. My Tikkun, I say, what is his remedy? Yarba, a love rain. He should send numerous friends to his teacher to intercede on his behalf. Shinemar, as is said in the continuation of that verse, he should overwhelm his teacher with legions of friends. However, as the verse concludes, the Yisron Hakshir Chachma. But the advantage of wisdom is greater. All the more so would his studies have progressed if his behavior had been pleasing to his teacher in the first place. So they're saying his behavior was not pleasing to his Rebbe, and that's why his Rebbe gave him the ugly face, and that's why his Torah was not learned well either. While we're on Ravami or Oma Ravami, my dechsiv, what is the meaning of that which is written? If the snake bites him because it was not charmed, then the master of speech has no advantage. Imr Isadar interpreted homiletically this means if you see a generation, in which the sky is rust colored, it's like copper, from its failure to precipitate dew and rain, is because the generation is lacking in people who speak soft utterances. They do not daven. What is their remedy? They should go to one who knows how to speak softly, meaning one who knows how to daven. And here they're talking really more about the shliach tzibur than anyone else. The chsiv, as it is written elsewhere, Yagida love reyo. His colleague should speak, should daven on his behalf. The Gemara returns to the conclusion of the previous verse to continue this lesson. Then Yisra and the Baal and then the master of speech has no advantage. For Misha, Eshaloi Lilchoj, this teaches that someone who is able to speak softly, someone who knows how to daven, the Ein Lochesh, but does not daven, what benefit does he derive from remaining silent? The Ein Lochesh, and if he, the master of speech, spoke softly, daven, but was not answered, Maitikanasi, what is one's remedy? What should he do to bring rain? Yelach Eitzel Chosid Shabadar. He should go to the pious man of the generation. The Yirba Allah and he should profusely pray on one's behalf. Shenemar, and he should pray for you. Shenemar, as it says, that he commands the rain to fall because of a petitioner. So the Gemara is saying, you need a mafkia. The ain pigia elatvila. And the word pigia, whose form mafkia is used in this verse to mean a petitioner, means nothing other than davening. Shenemar, as it says elsewhere, ba'ata al tuspalo ba'ata mazeh. And you do not pray on behalf of this nation, the altisa badam rina utfila. And do not raise on their behalf clamor and prayer, the Altifka be, and do not entreat me, Tifka. The Imlachash will also be Yodo. And if he, the master of speech, spoke softly, he davened, and he was successful, his Tfilos were answered. Umagia does all love. And as a result, he becomes haughty if the one who davens and it's answered. And all of a sudden, he starts strutting around like a big shot. 
Maybe Afla Olam. He brings divine anger to the world. Shenemar, as it is said, Mikna Af Al Ola, an acquisition of anger on account of his rising up. An expo- another exposition of this last pasuk, Rava Amar, Shnei Tamidei Chachamim, Sheyoshvim Be'irachas. If two Torah scholars reside in one city, the Eino Chenzelozeh Bahalacha, and are not agreeable to one another in matters of Halacha, this Kainan Ba'af Umalenoisay. They provoke Hashem's anger and bring it upon themselves. Shenemar, as it says. Mikna af al olam. He provokes anger, which goes up and rises. According to this exposition, the entire verse is understood to mean Yagida love reo mikna af al olam. One colleague should talk to the other. If he does not do so, then he provokes anger, which goes up and rises. He provokes is not a literal translation of mikna. The rendition is based on the similarity of mikne acquisition to mekane provokes. There isn't a question. Yes. Mika, mikane'in. Okay. That includes the word kanai, which is a zealot. Right. Meaning that they they become they become extremely Zealous in their way in in their attitude of one towards the other. Is that what it means? I don't know. I'm looking. What that he became haughty? No, it's in a negative way. It's saying that the guy davened for rain, and he was successful. No, no, I understand. He becomes. And if he becomes haughty because he says, oh, look at me, I did, I, I was able to bring the rain. Right. Whereas you couldn't, you know, he, he thinks too much of himself. Correct. Right. Here is the, the word mit kanein. It lo- includes the word kanai. Yes. Zealot. Yes. So he, bec- he becomes more of a zealot. Is that what we're, we're saying? You're, you're saying it means it becomes haughty. I'm saying it's become... Because if I'm breaking up the word based on its on, on its shorish, it becomes more of a zealot, meaning he he pushes his point of view more so than 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 anything else. I would guess, in terms of the way he expresses his haughtiness, but it's not in a positive way. It's definitely in a negative way. Well, zealotry is not considered to be a positive trait. Under what circumstances? There's I mean, a... there's only there's only uh, one time when we when we Pinchas was the one time in Pinchas, Pinchas, yes. But in most cases, the Abanim always you know frown on somebody who's a who's a who's a zealot. Right. Don't jump so quickly. Take your time. Think about it more. And do it. So that's true. Zealot is not considered a positive thing. Correct? Okay. Correct. I'm a Reish Lakish. We are now just about halfway down a little more. We're back to where the white lines, the wide lines start. Two Two lines before that. Two two lines before the white lines. Before that, correct. So another exposition of the verses explained. Amar Rish Lakish says, My Dixiv, what is the meaning of that which is written? Imi Shochanachash Bulolachash. If a snake bites because it was not charmed, then the master of speech has no advantage. In the future, all the animals will assemble and come to the snake. For Omrim Lo, when they say to it, 
Ari Dores Vioja. A lion claws its prey and eats it. The Aftore Vioja. Oh, Zev. A wolf tears its prey and eats it. These and all other animals derive benefit from their acts of aggression. But you, the snake, what benefit do you derive from biting people and killing them? The snake will answer them. And the master of speech has no advantage. Neither does the master of speech, one who maligns other verbally, derive any benefit from his harmful talk. So he's comparing the fact that you actually get no benefit from Lashon Hara. Uh, I have a question. I have a question. Yes, yes. Okay. The, when we go back to the story uh, of Adam and Chava and the snake, you know, Hashem cursed the snake and basically said, you know, your job will be to bite. No, okay. no. What he said, yes. he said to the snake is you're going to eat dust. And you will bite, you know, you will bite the, the ankle. Heel, of, right. The woman's heel will stomp on you. Correct. No, but he, he will bite and she will, she will step on his head. Okay. Yeah. But the fact is that he was cursed to do that. It wasn't, a, you know, it was, he had no, it, it was not an advantage that he was told to bite. It was just, he was told that this is what, your lot will be. So there's no advantage in this. It's not no, like, you know, Hashem gave... Advantage, no. What Hashem did was, Hashem made sure he had unlimited food. The idea behind this klola, why is it a klola? Okay, you, you can eat dust, you can eat anywhere, you're never going to go hungry. Why is that a klola? That you should eat the dirt. You always have dirt. The answer is... That the quota was, you should not need Hashem to daven to him. You should never have to come to me. That's basically it. Hashem is saying to him, I don't want to be bothered with you. And I don't want you coming to me for anything. And that's his curse. So that's why having unlimited food in the way of dirt is considered to be a clola. We good? So Hashem is basically saying to the snake, you have no way of getting uh, anything uh, from me. No, mechila of any kind. Right. Which, which to me is is bothersome. I mean, even for Rasha, Hashem gives him an out. So we're saying for the snake, you have no out. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I would have to look into it. Okay. All right, it's 11 o'clock. I have to move on to my next job. So thank you very much. You're very welcome. How were we? Yasha Koach. Thank, you, thank you, Isaac. You're Good very, job. Good job. Uh, I don't, yeah, we will, it's afternoon, I guess, 3 o'clock. Right. And, and the it's rabbi comes back tomorrow. The flesh of doing. I enjoyed this. Thank you. All right. Cult of right, who's teaching the class today? I don't know. Hello. They don't tell me anything.